good evening and welcome. I am your host, Mr Adams. On tonight's video, we shall be discussing two different Scottish urban legends, both of which are from the Shetland Islands. Let's begin. The Wolver Shetland is rich in mythology, folklore and legend. One of a number of otherworldly creatures that are said to inhabit it is the Wolver. The wolver has some similarities to a werewolf in that it is part human and part wolf. However, unlike most werewolves, the wolver is not a shapeshifter. It has never been a human being and does not turn into a wolf-like creature at times of full moon. The wolver has a body like a man covered in short brown hair with a wolf's head. This is his permanent state. There is also another marked difference between the traditional view of a werewolf and that of a wolver. Whereas a werewolf is a creature to be feared, the wolver is completely opposite and is noted for having a kind heart. As long as people leave it to live its life in peace, it will not pose any risk to a human. It is happy to live alone in a cave and enjoy the peaceful life. It has been seen fishing from a rock now known as the Wolver's Stain. If it does intervene in the lives of people, it is said to perform a generous and kindly act. The Wolver is known to have helped lost travellers by guiding them to nearby towns and villages. It is reported to have left fish on the windowsills of poor families. If the Wolver learnt that a family is facing hardship and was without food, its benevolent nature would come to the fore and it would provide them with a supply of fish. It is also said that if a family was faced with sickness and death, the wolver could be seen paying its respects outside their home. The wolver has, however, been known to kill, but only in self-defence. The wolver gives what it receives. If you treat it kindly, it will return the favour. However, if you don't, then you will get what you deserve. The second Shetland legend I'll be discussing tonight is that of the Boneless. Now, unlike the Wolver, the Boneless is something that should be feared should you ever cross its path. The Boneless, locally known as the Frittening, is a strange and malevolent entity from the folk tales of the Shetland Isles. It is a unique creature, with many different accounts and explanations being offered to its origins, ranging from a sea monster, to aliens, to unidentified sea blobs. My first thoughts on reading over the descriptions of this monster is that from the 1958 Steve McQueen classic movie, The Blob. Only rather than it being pink in colour, it's as if a bunch of sea foam has came to life. Many years ago, the islands of Shetland experienced a strange and frightening phenomenon in which this bizarre, blob-like monster is said to have brought disease and misfortune in its wake. Floating across the ocean to reach its destination, the blob-like body was durable and rubbery but also sank and emitted a nauseating aura. Most disturbing of all is that the boneless is said to induce states of madness in anyone who gazes upon it. The boneless form, being so alien and frightening, the victims were left traumatised and often completely insane. Arriving on the ocean tide and leaving again with said tide, the boneless is mindless and dangerous, moving away from shore and attacking people in their homes by slamming itself against windows and doors, always appearing during the hours of night, when the veil between the mortal and other worlds are said to be thin. The boneless is said to be lacking any real notable personality, and many consider it to be a mindless entity that came and went much like a force of nature rather than a thinking animal or human. The lack of personality makes the boneless all the more terrifying for those who encounter it, since it does not seem to have any motive. It is either incapable or unwilling to show any empathy towards any of its victims, most likely not even recognise them as such. Here is a tale of someone who came across the boneless. One night, a man was sitting in his house, reading the Bible by light of candle. All of a sudden, he heard a sickening splat, like the sound of a huge mass of wet meat slapping against the front door. With his Bible clutched in one hand, he pulled open the door and looked out. By the light of the moon, he could see a puddle of slime on the front porch. His eyes followed the trail of slime, and it led down the steps and into the darkness. Just then, he noticed something moving in the dark. It was pale, white, and shapeless but he couldn't make out what it was. 
He snatched an axe from the woodpile and followed the mysterious apparition. With his bible in one hand and his axe in the other, he followed it down a road that led towards the cliffs overlooking the sea. He caught up with it just as it was about to slide over the cliff and escape into the sea. The man hurled his axe at the thing and it stuck fast in the slimy creature. He ran back to the house where he gathered his servants and persuaded them to accompany him to the spot. The boneless thing was still there, silent and motionless, with the axe still sticking in it. None of them could tell whether it was alive or not, and none of them could even tell what it looked like, because they all saw different things. The men were frightened, so they hastily began to bury the thing, flinging earth over it until it was covered. Then they dug a wide trench around it, so that no one could get near it. The next day, however, the man's son heard his father telling people about this mysterious boneless thing, and he became curious. The boy wanted to get a look at it himself. When no one was around, he went down to the heap of earth near the cliffs and jumped over the trench. He began digging into the earth with his hands. When he scooped out a handful of clay, he suddenly saw a strange unearthly light and a white mist formed around him, like a dense fog. The frightened boy scrambled to get away, but something rose out of the hole and began to slither towards him. It was pale, white and shapeless. He turned to run back to the house, but the thing overtook him. It slid up all over him and wrapped itself around him like a wet, heavy blanket. He felt like he was being smothered. It was as cold as the night sea and it smelled like rotten flesh. Then it tightened around him, and he had the sickening feeling that he might be torn in two if it didn't let him go. The horrible thing then dragged him towards the edge of the cliff. He could hear the waves crashing below. He tried to call out for help but he was so scared that the scream died in his throat. He felt around with his one free hand and managed to grab onto a rock and hung onto it for dear life. All he could think to do was pray. Now I lay me down to sleep, he muttered. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. No sooner had he said this than the thing let him go. It rolled over the cliff and disappeared. The boy lay there for a long time clinging to the rock, shivering and shaking. Eventually, he managed to drag himself back to the house where he told his parents what had happened. So if you ever find yourself on Shetland late at night, be wary of the shapeless thing, for you might just die of fright. I've been your host, Mr Adams. Good night.